Hello and welcome to the first video of the Excel YouTube channel Insights video series. Now in this video we will build the base for our upcoming analysis of this YouTube channel. So let's have a look at what kind of data we actually have, how we can import those data into a new Excel workbook and why we need an input summary sheet. Let's start. So this is our starting point. We have a more or less empty folder. The only thing that's in here are some source files. Let's first have a look at those source files and then we can start building the workbook. So I'm opening the source files folder now. In this folder we can see that we have three CSV files. These files contain the YouTube statistics that we want to analyze. And we have another file named country codes text. We will have a look at that country codes text file in a few seconds. Let's first focus on the CSV files. If you look at the name of those files, you see that we cover the period from January 2016 until February 2017 in total. Let's now open one of the files to see what kind of statistics we actually have. So I'm opening the January file now. And you see that we have in the first two columns the country name and the country ID. So this is basically where you're coming from. And in the following columns we have the statistics like watch time in minutes, views, likes, and so on. Now let's focus on that country ID maybe. We just saw a file named country codes text. So we might connect this column with the country codes text file. Let's have a look at that. So I'm now opening the country codes text file and in the first column we see that CC. So that's basically the regional or the continent code of that country. In the second column, we have the A2 code, and this is the country code, and this is equal to the code that we saw in the CSV files. So we might remember that when we import the data, and it might make sense to only import the first two columns, but we will see how we can do that. So as we now understood the input files, and by the way, all CSV files have the same structure, so the only difference is really the period they cover, we can now go back to the YouTube folder and start building our workbook. So in the YouTube folder, I'm pressing the right mouse key, new and Excel worksheet. Now let's name that maybe YouTube statistics. That's it. I'll now open the new file. And of course we don't have any data in here so far. One note maybe before we start, I'm using the latest version of Microsoft Excel for this analysis. If you use an older version of Microsoft Excel, this is not a problem because all functions and formulas we will use are also covered by the older versions of Microsoft Excel. So now we want to import the data. And before we import the data, let's think about the amount of data we actually have. We saw that we have four input files, so it might make sense to create four new sheets in this workbook. And we can create a new sheet by simply pressing that little plus symbol down here. So one, two, three, this is it. So we will import our data into those four worksheets. And I'm now selecting the first worksheet and now we can start importing the data. I will use the Excel integrated data import function. Why am I using this? Well, we saw that we have CSV and text files and that those files are really good structured. So this function is really appropriate for situations like that. Of course, we have other ways on how we can import data into Excel, but we will not use them right now. So to find the data import function, we have to go to the data ribbon, which sounds appropriate. And in the left area, we find the get external data button. If we press that button once, then we see that we have several options on where we can import data from. In our case, we will use the from text import function. So after pressing from text, I now have to select the folder where the source files are located. In my case, this is the desktop, YouTube and the source files folder. Now I will select the first CSV file and by first I mean the one from January to June 2016. So I click the file and press import. Now the text import wizard opens. Well, what is the text import wizard? The text import wizard basically helps Excel to understand the structure of your input data and helps you to define how your data should be imported into your Excel workbook. 
So the first thing you have to decide is whether you have delimited data or data with a fixed width. Hmm. Now you might be confused what kind of data you have. So the easiest way to find out what data you have is the preview of file you can see down here. And if we look into our data, we see that we have the country name, a comma, the country ID, a comma, and so on. So the delimited function is best used if you have characters such as commas, which is true in our case, or tabs to separate each field. As this is true in our case, we will use that function. If you would have a fixed width, well, this would be applied if you could simply draw a vertical line right here between each of the items you have in your columns. So this is not the case at the moment, so we will stick to the delimited function. The second thing you have to decide is where you want to start importing your data. In our case, we will start importing in row one because this is where we have our header. The file origin is automatically set by Excel, so no need to change that. And the last thing we have to decide is whether our data has headers. In our case, and we saw that in the preview before, we have headers, so we can tick that box right here. Now we are finished with that step, so we can click next. And now we have to select the delimiter. At the moment, the tab delimiter is selected, which doesn't help a lot, as we can see in the preview down here. So we need to unselect the tab and select the comma as a delimiter, as we learned in the previous step, because that's our delimiter that we have in the input data. And we can immediately see that now our data are formatted correctly, which means that we don't need the third step. Remember, we are in step two or three now, but we can already press finish at the moment. So I'll press finish now. And the only thing we have to decide now is where we want to import the data to. In our case, we will use the existing worksheet and cell A1, which is the one selected right here. So this is fine. This means we can press OK and the data are immediately imported into our new Excel workbook. One important note maybe, at the moment we imported the data hard-coded. This means we don't have any link to the input data that we originally had. So we are almost done right here. The only thing we should do is we should rename the sheet according to the data it contains. And as we learned that all the data in the CSV files more or less cover the same statistics, but they are different in terms of the period they cover, it might make sense to name that sheet according to the period it covers. So I'll simply go down to the sheet name here, double click it and write January to June 16. So that's the sheet name of the first sheet. Now that we're done with that, I will import the remaining two sheets for the remaining two periods. And then we will have a look at the import of the country codes text file. So see you in a few seconds. Now we imported the YouTube statistics and we can now go to the country codes text file. We will again use the data import function. So we go to the data ribbon, get external data, from text again, so everything like we did it before. Select the country codes text file, press import, keep the delimiter or the file type as delimited better said. The data has headers, which we can see right here. Now press next. And now we see in the data preview that the data are already organized correctly. And this is simply the case because these data, and this is what we saw when we had a look at the input files before, have a tab as delimiter. And as Excel automatically sets the tab as a delimiter, this is the reason why this is already correct. So now we could of course press finish again, but we won't do that here. And why won't we do that? Well, when we looked at the data, we saw that we only need the first two columns actually for our analysis. So why should we import five columns if we only need two? And the good thing is we can select the columns that we want to import in the text import wizard. So if we click next and go to step three, we see in that column data format, the last option, do not import column, skip. This is what we want to do. So let's select the three columns that we want to skip. And this is column three. And now I press shift and click the left mouse button to select all the three columns that we don't want to import. And now we click on do not import and Excel immediately sets the, well, the description of the column to skip column. So this is it. Now we only import the first two columns and can click finish right here. This is the same logic as before. We want to import the data to the existing worksheet. This is okay. And here we are. We now imported only the first two columns as we wanted it to be. 
So this sheet is also almost finished. The only thing we have to do is we have to rename the sheet. Let's double click it and call it countries. So this is it. Now we imported all our data into the new Excel workbook. Now we can start with that input summary sheet. And now you might wonder why do we need an input summary sheet and how do we build that? Let's have a look at that first. Now that we imported all of our data into the Excel workbook, we could simply start with the analysis part. This means we could start working with the data, build some tables and prepare our data for the final output charts. And we could do that with direct links. So this means we directly link the analysis part to the input sheet. So if we need data from the sheet from January to June 2016, we simply retrieve data with a direct link to a cell in the corresponding sheet. Well, there is nothing wrong about that and you could do that, but there is also another way on how you can work with input data like that and how you can connect those data to your analysis part of the workbook. And this is how we are going to do it. We will put the input summary sheet between the analysis part and the input sheets we just imported. And we will do that with dynamic sheet references to the source files. Now, why are we doing this? Well, the main advantage is that we have to put some work into that input summary sheet, of course, first. But as soon as the structure works, we can easily change the data. So we can delete periods, we can add periods, and we can link all those sheets. So this means we can link the analysis sheet to the input summary sheet and the input summary sheet to the input sheets dynamically. So we don't have to write any new formulas. We only need to copy existing tables and change the sheet reference. And this is really nice. And this is why we will build that input summary sheet now. Now that we talked about the why, you might wonder how we can build that input summary sheet. Let's have a look at that. So the first thing we need for the input summary sheet are the row names. So in our case, those are the countries. And this is a little bit more complex because we have three different periods and we need all the countries we have data for, of course, but without any duplicates. So it might be that we have countries like the United States, where we have data for in all three periods, and we might have countries which we only have data for in one of the three periods, for instance. So we need to make sure to include all of the countries we have without any duplicates. As soon as we got the row names, we need to define column names. So our statistics, actually. This is more easy because, as we saw, all three CSV files have the same column names, so this should not be a problem. As soon as we got the row names and the column names, we will need a dynamic formula which allows us to retrieve the results based on those two items, so the country and the statistic that we want. As soon as we got the formula, we want to add one more thing. And this one more thing is the sheet reference as an input cell. Now, what does that mean? We simply want to be able to define the sheet name, and in our case, this is the period that we want, which will then define the source file where the results will be retrieved from. So in total, we want to be able to define the country, the statistic, and the period the data should be retrieved from. As soon as we build a table, we will copy the table once and twice, because we have three periods, so we need three tables. After we copy the tables, we simply have to adjust the sheet reference to July to December 16 for the second table, and to January to February 17 for the third table, and then we are done with our input summary sheet. Now, as you can see, some work ahead of us, so let's start with the row names and the column names in this video series. So as we want to create an input summary sheet, we need to create a new sheet. And I'll simply press the plus again, click and hold the left mouse button to drag the sheet to the left of the existing input sheets. Why am I putting it to the left? Well, this workbook will follow an input analysis output structure. And the output part will be to the left of the whole workbook so that you can see the results immediately after opening the workbook. And this is the reason why I also position the input summary sheet, which is not a pure input, but some adjusted input by us, to the left of the pure and unchanged input. Let me quickly name that sheet input summary. And now let's start with the column names. And if we look at the input files, we see that the column names are equal for all three input files. So we can simply select the first row in one of the files, 
press Ctrl Z, go back to the input summary sheet, and now press Ctrl Alt V. This will open the Paste Special menu. This is a really big help because the Paste Special menu helps you to exactly define how you want to paste the data you previously copied. In our case, we won't focus on formulas or values or formats. We will focus on the Paste Link button down here. Let me click the button to see what happens. So as you can see, we pasted the column names as we wanted it to be, but we also see that we pasted those column names with a link to the source file. And this is the great advantage of that paste link function. If you simply paste values hard-coded, so without any reference, you will never find out where this value came from if you have a bigger workbook. So sometimes, and also in this case actually, the paste link function might be better than pasting hard-coded values. Let's now just select all of the columns and press that little line between the last column we selected and the following column to increase the column width so that we can basically read all of the column names. So as we now got the column names, we now need the row names. You remember, we need a list of all of the countries we have statistics for without any duplicates. And we can simply do that by again using that paste link functionality and we will start in the first sheet, so January to June 2016. If we now select cell A2, so the first country, and now press Shift, Control and the down arrow key, now press Control Z, go back to the input summary sheet into cell A2, and now again press Control, Alt and V, and paste link, we pasted the first set of countries. Now press Control and the down key, and scroll a little bit down. And now we can select the second sheet, so July to December 16. Select cell A2, shift all, uh, sorry, shift, control, and the down arrow key, control Z, and back to the input summary sheet, now into cell A203, control Alt V, paste link, and control and the down arrow key. I know it's kind of repetitive, but only one last time. And now we go to January to February 2017, cell A2, shift, control, and the down arrow key, control Z, and paste that again with control, alt, V, paste link. Now that's it. Now we got the linked list with all the countries, but of course with a lot of duplicates. So let's select the whole column A and now apply the remove duplicates function, which will, well, as the function says, remove the duplicates. And we can find that function in the data ribbon, data tools and remove duplicates. Then Excel asks us if we want to expand the selection. Well, no, we don't want that because why would we do it here? Doesn't make sense. So we will continue with the current selection, press remove duplicates. We see that Excel selected the column A. This is the one we need. And we press OK. And now we see that Excel found a lot of duplicate values and only some unique values, well, not some, it's 217, so a lot of countries, and by that, a lot of users of that channel, so thanks a lot for that, by the way. So we press OK right here, and now we see if we scroll down, we have nothing else right here, but we have the list of the unique countries up here. So we are almost done. The only thing we should do is, we should also copy that country name to the country ID column because country name and country ID should go along with each other. So let's do that. So we will simply select cell A2, press shift, control and the down arrow key and now press shift and the right arrow key and control R to copy the formula to the right. And now we build the base for our input summary sheet. Now, in the next video, we will have a look at some formulas and we will think about how we can retrieve the data dynamically from the input sheet using that formulas. So, thanks a lot for watching, see you next time and bye-bye.